Hey guys, Jason Harwood with Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon and a bonus Facebook Live and YouTube video for you uh, to answer a question that I got from a friend of mine, Facebook friend of mine, uh, Cheryl Lynn, who said she recently listened to my podcast episode um, about Alma, chapter 17, and she said, I hope you might explain how you've taught this story to seminary students or to gospel doctrine classes in a time when we are teaching anti-violence. It's hard to know how to take the story of Ammon cutting off the arms of so many. And I thought, wow, that is a great question. And uh, just with my uh, preference for responding to questions, I thought I'd do a Facebook Live video for Sherilyn rather than try to write all of this out. So I started to think about our response to situations like maybe what Ammon was facing. So let's look at a couple of things. Um, I'll start off by saying I'm not a church authority. This is not uh, this is not endorsed church doctrine. I'm just a guy who does a podcast called Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon. Now, I did uh, you know teach seminary for five years, and uh, I have the the podcast where I help people understand the scriptures. And I think I understand the scriptures very well. That said, I'm not trying to share official church doctrine. I'm just sharing scriptures with you. You'll notice that my response will be deeply rooted in the scriptures. And if you have other thoughts and opinions, I hope you'll share them with me. Most importantly, if you have questions like Cheryl Lynn's, I thought it was an awesome question. I hope you'll message me, message me right here on Facebook. Uh, that's what Cheryl Lynn did. You can always email me, jasonharwood34 at gmail.com. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of things. Uh, first off, I'm going to go to 3 Nephi chapter 12. This is the Savior speaking. It is written, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye shall not resist evil. Whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue him at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him, twain. It's maybe interesting to point out that Ammon lived in the time of the law of Moses rather than in the time of the law of Christ, a much more um, turn the other cheek time, uh, right? Ammon lives in the heart of eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. So that, that might be an explanation. When we look at Ammon, we say, man, why did Ammon go around cutting off people's arms? Remember, he lives in the time of eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. We might wonder the same thing. Man, why did people go to church and kill sheep? That's what they did. They went to church and they killed a sheep. We would never do that if today, right? Well, that was the law of Moses. Uh, Ammon lived in the time of the law of Moses. That might be an explanation for it. Let me take you again also to Doctrine and Covenants section 98. This is a great section for this topic. Um, starting in verse 23, so DNC 9823. If men will smite you or your families once, and ye bear it patiently and revile not against them, neither seek revenge, ye shall be rewarded. But if ye bear it not patiently, it shall be accounted unto you as being meted out as just measure unto you. So if people come and attack your family once and you attack back, that's okay. That's accounted as being meted as just measure. It's not It's not great, because if you don't, then you're going to be rewarded, right? If you revile not against them, neither seek revenge, you shall be rewarded. If your enemy shall smite you the second time, you and you not revile against your enemy, and bear it patiently, you shall be rewarded a hundredfold. And if he smite you a third time, and you bear it patiently, your reward shall be doubled unto you fourfold. These three testimonies shall stand against your enemy, um, and um, if he shall come upon you or your children or your children's children unto the third and fourth generation, I have delivered thine enemy into thine hands. So even at that, God is saying, look, after two or three or four times, if somebody comes against you, you're, you're at that point justified in, in being a bit more uh, aggressive in your defense. The other thing I think about is the time of Ammon versus our time. Even the time of Joseph Smith, section 98, versus our time. My experience, notably, might be unique because I grew up in Utah 
and I've lived in Idaho. The two places I've spent most of my life are Utah and Idaho. Pretty peaceful places. Places where there's not a lot of outward physical aggression against followers of Jesus Christ. I've never, not once, experienced a physical threat of violence against me or any member of my family, particularly for our faith. I don't know if that is common for all members of the church, and even today, right? But, but you're looking, even in Joseph Smith's time, at a much different time in American history where, I mean, things were just different, right? There was a lot more kind of take the law into your own hands society. And we don't live in that now as much. Right now, if there's an act of violence against you, your, your best option is contact the local authorities, right? I think if if the prophet today were speaking and, and somebody said, gosh, what do you do if somebody comes against you aggressively? Contact the local authorities is your best option. Um, right now, let's go look at the story of Ammon in particular. So if I were teaching this in answer to the question, if I were teaching this to youth, if I were teaching this to a group of seminary kids, I would say, Let's make sure we understand time and situation. Um, let's make sure we understand what was going on very clearly with Ammon and how that might be different than what might be going on in our time. But let's go take a look. Ammon, he's out there with the flocks, um, and the Lamanite servants, a, a, a different group of Lamanites, a certain number of Lamanites who had been with their flocks stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon and the servants of the king, and they scattered them in so much that they fled many ways. The servants of the king began to murmur, saying, now the king will slay us. It's apparently common practice at the time of Ammon that if you're watching the sheep and the sheep get scattered, the king's going to kill you for that. So what the Lamanites just did was a roundabout act of aggression and war. Scattering the sheep was a big deal. It was a capital offense. You let the sheep get scattered, you're going to get killed. The king's going to kill you. The, 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 the other servants are like, that's it, we're dead, right? <laughs> Ammon, he says, well, hold on. They wept because of the fear of being slain. Ammon says, hey, how about we just go gather the sheep back up? How about that? How about instead of sitting here crying um, that the king's going to kill us, how about we just go gather the sheep? Seems like a logical, reasonable idea. Okay, so we're going to do that. Um, so they do that. They gather the sheep together. They went in search of the flocks to follow Ammon, and they rushed forth which with much swiftness, and the men stood again to scatter the flocks. It's the second time. Flocks get scattered. It, it's a capital punishment, right? Ammon and the people he's with are going to be killed if he allows this to happen. I think that's important to understand. Again, I don't understand everything that happens in the life of a teenager. But I mean, I watch the news pretty closely. I'm not aware of the last time, right? That there's a lot of terrible things that happen in schools. Luckily, this type of um, aggression and persecution is pretty rare and and even more so in terms of religious oppression against LDS people. I mean, that just doesn't exist for the most part. I, I don't want to discount anybody who may have gone through something terrible and horrible, and you may be saying, yes, but in my situation, it was very bad. That may be true. Ammon is literally in a life or death situation when he does what he does. I think that's important to understand. It's not um, as, as bad as bullying is. It, it wasn't bullying that the Lamanites were doing. It was war. It, it was an act of aggression to the level of life and death. Now, at that point, even in today's society, we would say, if your life is threatened, if you are in a life and death situation, do all you can to preserve your life. And even in today's society, I think we would teach that. Right? Ammon wasn't being bullied. He wasn't being pushed against a locker. He, he wasn't having his books dumped. He wasn't called a name. Those things are terrible and horrific and should never be justified or condoned, right? That's, that, that's terrible behavior and we should love one another, right? That, that's far from what God 
taught and, and what Christ expects of his true followers. But that's not the situation Ammon was in. Ammon was literally in a life or death situation. So they come again to, to scatter the flocks, and Ammon says, encircle the flocks, and I'll go fight this battle. It's a battle. It's a war. So what Ammon does it is, it's, it, it, I think it's closer to war than it is anything that, that luckily most students that we would be teaching in seminary, most people that we would teach in a gospel doctrine class have ever faced. Uh, interestingly, in the U.S. at the time of this recording, it's Memorial Day. Um, and so I, it was interesting for me to spend my day thinking and, and talking and, and contemplating how I would respond to this. Um, the church is very clear. Church doctrine is very clear uh, that serving in the military is an honorable and um, upright and just thing to do. Defending your country, defending your freedoms. Moroni did it. Uh, you know, Captain Moroni, Helaman, Nephi, uh, just about every great prophet, Mormon, Moroni, just about every great prophet in the Book of Mormon, Ammon here included, had to defend their lives, often in a violent way. And, and I can just sit back and be grateful every single day that I live in a place and time in society where I worship how I want, I do 99% of everything I want to do, and I do it in peace, mostly because other people uh, choose to defend that peace and freedom, for which I'm grateful. Um, but I think what we see with Ammon is he's in a time and situation that we would, we would identify as an act of life or death, uh, the Lamanites are coming, they're armed. They're, they're not coming at him unarmed. If Ammon doesn't defend himself, they're going to kill him or they're going to scatter the sheep and then the king's going to kill him. So um, I think even in today's society, we would say, yeah, Ammon did the right thing there. In today's society, we would say, what does God expect of us? Section 98 of the Doctrine and Covenants is a great place to start, um, right? Turn the other cheek, turn the other cheek turn the other cheek. It's what Christ did. Go, uh, uh, maybe we won't take the time to go there. Um, you've got the story of Alma and Amulek and they're being beaten and um, spit upon and mocked and ridiculed in the prison and they don't say a word back. The Savior, same thing. Beat, ridiculed, lashed, spit upon, mocked, eventually uh, crucified and killed. And he just let it happen. Um, turn the other cheek. And in most instances, we would say that's the Christ-like way to respond. If it's a life and death situation like Ammon was in, maybe that's justified. Also, remember time and place. Ammon was in the time of tur uh, not turn the other cheek. Ammon was in the time of eye for nine, tooth for tooth. Much different time. Hopefully, that helps you better understand the Book of Mormon. Hopefully, that was an adequate response to the question. And hopefully, the next time, maybe you teach this chapter in, in a seminary, early morning seminary, or to a group of gospel doctrine people, you can show that there is a difference between what Ammon did and our everyday lives. Our everyday lives are filled with opportunities so much different than Ammon's. Ammon was serving the Lamanite king, and that's how, what he had to do to serve. I'm so grateful that my service does not include what Ammon had to do. I am so grateful that my service includes making brownies for people and helping my neighbor move his house and volunteering to take dinner to a family who's had a hard time. I'm so grateful that that's much of what my service entails. I'm grateful that my service involves visiting a family who hasn't been to church in a while and just letting them know that they're loved and cared for. I'm so grateful that my service is not what other people's service and sacrifices had to be. So let's be grateful we're not in a situation like what Ammon is. Let's pray every day we're never in a situation like what Ammon is. Let's pray for those who find themselves in life or death struggles for peace and for freedom. 
and then let's go out and serve God by serving our fellow men in a way that shows love and compassion and maybe, just maybe, love and compassion and charity will spread in the world and hate and anger and violence will diminish. That's what we can hope for. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you share this um, and maybe it can be helpful for others as well. This is Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon.